The skies are ablaze. Ashes and embers suffocate the air. The flames of hatred have left behind a hellscape on earth. Imposing figures march through the haunting scene, enacting their evil, turning into monsters, nightmares. Echoes of senseless violence assault all the senses. And in the middle of this aftermath of madness are a pair of sisters. The older one guides the little one as she shambles along, shielding herself from the horrors, while they search for the rest of their family with waning hope. The melancholy is elevated with the diegetic music, the song of the little one. Dear friend, across the river, my hands are cold and bare. Dear friend, across the river, I'll take what you can spare. I ask of you a penny, my fortune it will be. I ask you without envy, we raise no mighty towers. Our homes are built of stone. So come across the river and find the world below. The innocent plea in the lyrics is instantly understandable and filled with grief. The idea of escaping the reality around you by reciting a folk song, possibly something sang to you by your own parents, is heart-wrenching when contrasted with the events on screen. It's a powerful way to start things off. And by the end of the show, this song will recontextualize and tie perfectly to the larger ideas of the story, all in due time. The sisters come across a grizzled warrior, still engaged in combat. They ask him about their parents, and with heavy heart, the man points them to the horrific reality. Every action has a consequence, and no one can escape reality, no matter how cruel. This warrior is forced face to face with the result of his actions. Though not directly responsible, he was part of this. His desires, his deeds, his hubris helped the course of fate reach this outcome. These girls are left with nothing but each other, lost and helpless. Faced with the reality, the man does the only thing he can. He lays down his arms and takes the girls to safety. For there is no point in fighting if you got nothing left to protect. Out of the ashes of this chaos, something better begins to bloom. Love, responsibility, the desire for peace. And yet, as the fires of conflict fade, a fresh ember of hatred is also ignited. What an excellent way to begin your story. Three minutes, we got drama, a grand event, a compelling origin for three major characters, some honest-to-goodness character development, the scene sets up the show's core themes, Consequences of actions, changing perspectives, self-sacrifice, love and kinship, the search for a better world. Such effective use of time. And the artistry is on point. The directing, every angle, the contrast of silence and the noise, the timing of the music, the mute sorrow. Every second sells this event as meaningful. There is a clear vision here, the show promises to deliver something great. It wants to offer the audience something real and profound. And this cold opening already works all on its own. 
you could release this scene as an animated short and it would be a great piece of narrative art even without the actual story to follow. The first three minutes of this show offer more substance than the average whatever product nowadays in its entirety. Just hook it to my veins! But all of that is naturally the artsy feelsy side of things. Your mileage may vary. But what about the objective storycraft side? Why exactly does this work? Well, to pick something obvious to focus on, this scene here is a great example of the utility of in medias res. That's a fancy Latin phrase, and translated to the language of London, it means in the midst of things. As a literary term, it refers to a narrative that starts off in the middle of the plot. We open up amidst some kind of important event already in motion. We don't get to see the build up to this event, and the details are left to be inferred by the audience via context, or explained with expositionary dialogue or flashbacks later on. In medias res is a rather popular way to open your story, and the reason for that is simple. By giving the audience something exciting to engage with right away, it instantly grabs their attention. The author not so subtly hints that the narrative has more going on than is immediately apparent. It's a way from the storyteller to place their best foot forward, to hook the audience right away. For contrast, the extreme opposite of in medias res would be to start off from the chronological beginning of all the events, literally from the main character's birth. That's not usually how stories begin. Usually. A more classic beginning would be to show the main character and the milieu in their day-to-day -day existence, establish the status quo, before introducing the inciting incident that shakes up that norm. Both of these approaches are perfectly valid, as are all the possible combinations in between. Every story should begin where it needs to begin for the author to deliver their intent, but the benefit that in medias res offers is that it automatically forces the audience to use their brain power just a tiny bit. They have to actually engage with the work, and not just consume mindlessly. At the same time, it's not supposed to be work, mind you. Too much loose info and weirdness with no context will only serve to frustrate the would-be audience. It's a subtle thing, giving just enough info so that the audience can keep up, without overwhelming them, or treating them like idiots who need everything spoon-fed to them. Are you hurt? No! Then what were you thinking, knucklehead? You graduated high school when you were 13, and this is what you do- But wait! There's more! When are you gonna start doing something with that big brain of yours? What? Go to college like you? So people can tell me stuff I already know? Unbelievable. Oh, what would mom and dad say? I don't know. They're, they're gone. They died when I was three, remember? See, most people like using their brains. We humans are in fact genetically coded that way. We like making sense of things, gathering info, and piecing things together. It is satisfying when one can exercise their mind just a tad and be able to understand what's going on rather than by an endless avalanche of exposition or some unnatural as you know statement. Audiences like it when the storyteller respects their intelligence and doesn't talk down to them. You may not think that's the case, looking at the current shite state of entertainment, but this is one of the multitude of reasons why modern media suckles nuts on average. Writers thinking their audience to be a bunch of idiots. The current norm in storytelling is stating the obvious, while never explaining the complex. If we want things to improve, two things must happen. Do not write for the lowest common denominator. And do not accept text that treats you like a drooling moron. Not just in terms of storytelling, but communication in general. Stupidity will only breed more stupidity.
Now, meanwhile, Arcane delivers a simple, clean, effective scene to kickstart its narrative by utilizing in media's res. There is an easy way to misuse this tool. Most of you have probably seen this at least once. And it's sadly an extremely common way in media's res is used. The story, or most likely a single episode of a TV series, opens up with an action scene, the hero faces the villain, they fight, there's some tension, the hero might be in trouble, and then we rewind the clock and start explaining how we ended up in this situation. This is crap. It's a waste of time. If you are going to show each and every single event that happened prior to this pivotal moment, then there is no reason why the story couldn't be told in chronological order in the first place. This is a trick from the author. The story is simple and straightforward, which is not a failing in any sense. But for some reason, the author feels like the tale needs to be spiced up a bit. And so, they tease the climax of the story at the beginning. As in, I promise something exciting will happen in the end, please keep watching. I don't know about you, but I for one am perfectly capable of waiting for the payoff, the action, the unfolding intrigue. I don't need the author to convince me that something exciting is eventually going to happen. If I like the characters, then I'm already invested in the tale by the time the action rolls around. Just tell the story as it is, there's no need for this jumping back and forth, because it offers nothing of substance to the narrative. If the point was to recontextualize the events, or reveal something unexpected, then that would be a different story. But this particular narrative trick tends to unfold in the exact same way as the chronological approach would. The hero goes about their routine, does the things one might expect, and ends up fighting the villain teased in the beginning. Like no shit. That's what he does. Why do we need the reminder in the beginning that his routine involves fighting bad guys? And that's not even going into the people who are susceptible to spoilers. Technically, this kind of storytelling spoils itself. It's ridiculous. And just to clarify, the Netflix Daredevil is excellent. The first season. I literally picked one of the worst points of the show as an example. The rest is mostly top notch. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for sticking around for this long. I hope you enjoy your time. This is gonna be another long journey, so stay tuned for more. And let's just have fun with this one. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.